Rob, it's funny because, you know, as Dave noted last night, everyone leaves. They, they turn off the show at 10.15. So I guess WWE had this plan. We're going to put Cody on in a title match at 10. We're going to try and stop the slide. Well, to cut to the chase, they started at 10. It was a 13-minute match. And then the last 45 minutes was like they threw in the towel. So I don't know what their plan was. They didn't have one as usual. All right, so uh, RK Bro opened up the show, and they're still teasing this uh, this unification match, which, by the way, they advertised for three weeks and didn't deliver. But, brother, stand up for WWE. Card subject to change. So now they're saying, hey, we're going to go to SmackDown and talk about it. And this led to Orton and Riddle versus the Street Profits for the tag team titles. And they had a very good 10-minute match. And at the end, uh, actually before the end, Riddle goes for a dive and he accidentally hit Randy. This is the first time this has happened. It is way too early to break them up. But after this past week, I fully intend or I fully expect them to break them up next week. What? Because they're completely wait. incompetent. Wait, wait. He also finished him with an RKO as Montez was jumping off the ropes and Randy was really happy and, and Riddle had that face where he was like more turned, you know, tuned in than ever before to being just like Randy. Yes. You, they they can't be doing that. Well, Actually, no I, What are you talking about? Mind. You're gonna You're be right. that guy now? No, I can't. You're I right. mean I, I can I can see it already. Randy's jealous and he's using his move and winning matches and he turns on him. What like, about that swerve though that Riddle turns on Randy? Dude, it doesn't matter. The point is as I was once told by the great Buddy Wayne, my trainer, the father of Nick Wayne, who in a decade may be the best worker on the planet, when it's time. That's when you do anything in wrestling. When it's time. And you know what it's not time for right now? Set. These two to break up. It's true. So I'm sure at this point that they're going to be breaking up imminently <laughs> and probably having a match at Hell in a Cell. We had a Kevin Patrick interview with Theory. No, I wasn't upset about it. I was merely pointing out, everybody, that they have now brought back the platform that they used in 1993 on WWF Superstars of Wrestling, where the guy interviews the guy on the platform with all the fans in the background. I was dying. Let's just go back to everything that Pritchard and Vince were doing in 1993. 2003. 2013. That was almost 30 years ago. Judgment Day comes out. It's Edge, Rhea Ripley, and Damian Priest. Edge cut all his hair off. I don't know if you've seen Edge of late, but his hair is like so dry that it like sticks out like uh, uh, you know Doc from Back to the Future. So you know he decided to shave the sides and just leave the top kind of long, and he slicked it back. Looked a thousand times better until he got into a brawl, and then it stuck straight up like uh, like Sheamus. But anyway, it is an improvement. And they did their promo, and this led to uh, Rhea. You know, she don't like the fans. Can you believe it? And so then we had Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan, which uh, involved Rhea Ripley giving her, like, the hardest kick to the head I've seen since the last time I watched a UFC pay-per-view. And I thought Liv was dead. And Rhea's supposed to stay in character, but she looked so sad to have killed poor Liv. And then she beat the hell out of her, and she submitted her. And then she put her in the hold again afterwards. And then out came Finn Balor and uh, AJ Styles to make the save, which led to Finn Balor and Damian Priest. They went four minutes, and Edge just ran in and speared him for the disqualification. Keep Wait, track see, of they, those, by the way. They didn't make the save. They just came out because their music hit, and they walked down to the ring. That's how they go to commercial now. Yeah. So next week, we're going to have a DNA test with Ezekiel and Elias. And uh, this this was the show where I figured it out. I figured out this whole Ezekiel thing. I've hated it from day one, and now I think I've figured it out. And if I'm right, this is going to be the storyline of the year. They have to. I realize I use that term a lot, and I'm proven wrong, but they have to have shot a whole bunch of footage with Elias before he shaved and cut his hair. Brian, I brought this up to you a long time ago. I know, and I but just, it went one ear and one, it went, and one ear and out another. Because we come up, here's the thing, Mike. We come up with all sorts of ideas and fantasy booking, and it's just all total whatever, BS, something stupid. But man, when he, when, when Ezekiel's in the ring and he goes, 
maybe my brother should just come out and play you a song. And that's when it, all, it just hit me. It was like, oh, my God, they've done a bunch of pre-tapes, and it's going to be awesome. So I think that this is going to work. You I do. why I have hope? I have hope because Kevin Owens is involved. Kevin can make That's anything work. Yes. He can make anything work. He, he can make yell, Kevin Owens work. He can <laughs> yell back and forth in a pre-tape, and it's going to be awesome. Yes. And what's what what they really need to do is not just pre-tapes on the screen and stuff like that, but they need to do a Falls Count Anywhere match where he brawls backstage, e- Ezekiel gets laid out, and all of a sudden Elias shows up and he's he's beaten up Kevin Owens. Oh, the strum of the guitar first just so Kevin Owens can look he's over. He's got to hit like... him with the guitar and run <laughs> off. And then, you know, you see Kevin covered in guitar pieces and then Ezekiel runs in and pins him. Dude, it'd be awesome. Go with me on this. This one. We had an Omos in the MVP VIP lounge, and and Cedric still wants in, and Lashley came out and beat him up, and nobody cared about any of this. Sonya Deville is no longer a whatever. She's been stripped of her duties as a backstage management type. She's now only a wrestler after losing a match where she could never wrestle again. And uh, her mystery opponent was the returning Alexa Bliss. And Alexa came out. She still has a doll. And uh, they do a half and half thing with the music. But she is back as Alexa the wrestler. She wears her wrestling gear. They play her wrestler music. She does wrestling moves. Thank God. (laughs) Thank God. All that rigmarole for a gimmick that sucked and led to her being taken off TV and put out of WrestleMania. And their new brilliant idea is, maybe we should just let her be a wrestler. And guess what? She was over. And she won with the Twisted Bliss in 40 seconds. Everybody was happy. So then we had uh, the Kevin Owens-Elias segment. And then we had a segment with uh, Becky Lynch and Asuka. This Becky character, I'm just, uh, this is another one I'm just totally over. It's like, whatever. Veer Mahan beat Frank Lohman, who was the star of the show. Go back and watch old Frank Lohman. They need to team this guy up with that one, uh, I forget her name. She's got a new name anyway, so it doesn't matter. But she's in NXT, and like everything she did was like over the top, and she would sell wacky and goofy facial looks for the whole nine yards. Her and Frank would be the most incredible team in all of WWE. Two total gimmicks, and I howled watching this segment. Cody versus Theory, they had him go 13 minutes. And then uh, Seth Rollins just ran in for the DQ because that's what they do. And he beat up Cody, and he gave him the curb stomp on the table. And, yes, they're going to do another Cody-Seth Rollins match. Will they beat Seth Rollins three straight times, which they never do with the top star? Or are they going to just screw it all up and beat Cody? I actually have faith, but I shouldn't. Then we had uh, Sasha and Naomi beating Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. Last week, Dewdrop said, hey, Nikki, are you sick of this stupidity? Like, you ready to be serious? Nikki nodded. She came out as Nikki Ash in the superhero costume, did all the same gimmick. But after getting beaten, Dewdrop did chastise her again and tell her it's time to stop doing this stupidity. So I think they will unmask and rename Nikki Ash (laughs) a slow build. Chubba beat Mustafa Ali. So uh, Sonya was removed from power because she was abusing her power. And then Miz just comes out as referee for an Ali match. And there's no explanation as to why. There's no explanation as to who allowed it. It just made absolutely zero sense. So he's the referee. He won't count for Ali. He fast counts when Ciampa makes a cover. He screws Ali. Will there be any repercussions? Uh, Seriously, everybody. Had the Lacey Evans video, and then we had, uh, literally, there were there, there was enough time for Bianca and Asuka to do a 14-minute match in the main event. But instead, we had a 24-7 segment where they're trying to serve papers to the grooms. They want divorces, the women. We had entrance, commercial, entrance, entrance. And by the time the match started... They had three minutes, Bianca versus Asuka, and Becky ran in for the DQ. (sighs) 
Back in a moment, Observer Live. Old yeah. Excalibur. We've got heat with him. <laughs> I was clearly joking when I said they sped up his voice. I had nothing to do with this, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> oh, now you have to apologize. His name is not Excalibur. His first yeah. name isn't Xavier. I like Excalibur. He used to be <laughs> yeah. a Caliber. If anything ever happens, like AW goes under or whatever, you know they always have those those uh, those commercials about drugs, and they have that guy that reads the list of side effects. Yes, one out there. I, 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 it's potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> well, that would certainly be bad. And I am not exaggerating that at all. <laughs> My point is, is they, I will they never re- take this drug under any circumstances. <laughs> potentially lethal taint fungus. Lol. <laughs> Lol. I hate him. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month. You can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.